Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Best Practices Monday Tech Talk. My name is Jamie Trujillo, and I will be moderating the webinar today. And our presenter will be Mariah Guillen, who is absolutely brilliant. You will just love this presentation today. Um, and our topic is creating an online presence in online learning. Really quickly, before we get started, please be sure to have yourselves muted, and I think everybody is. Um, you will have opportunities to give feedback um, verbally, but you can always put your feedback in the chat. If you um, need to ask a question or you have a comment, you can always do that. Um, so with that said, I will turn it over to Mariah. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm so excited that everyone can be here. Um, this is something that a lot of people have been asking, and so I just hope that this gives you guys a little bit of advice, a little bit of tips, you know, take what you can from it. Um, if it doesn't apply to you, that's fine. Not all of this is going to apply to everyone, but I hope that in some way you can take something out of it. So before we get started, I'm just gonna kind of go with an opening thoughts, and we're gonna take a quick Google form. Um, so if Jamie could put it there in the chat box, and I'm just gonna give you like three minutes. It's really not long, there's four questions. Um, and it's just asking you how comfortable you are with online teaching. Give me just a second. I'm just copying that link real quick. And OK, I have pasted the link into the chat. So you should have a chat come up um, to a Google form. If you just click right on that link, it will open up a new tab where you can answer the form. Perfect. And so like I said, I'm just going to give you three minutes. Just go on there right quick. Um, and this will tie into what we are going to talk about today. So just go ahead and do that. And like Jamie said, I'm, good, I'm just going to talk because I hate awkward silences. <laughs> um, but during this time, if you do have any questions at any point, please, like Jamie said, put them in the box. Um, I love questions. I always tell my students, if you're not asking questions, you're probably not learning. You're just letting it go in one ear and out the other. Um, it's always good to kind of get that feedback and you know, become an active listener, an active learner throughout all of this. And like I said, I love questions. All right, I'm gonna get out of this. Oh, it looks like, I'm sorry I didn't see that right away. It says, uh, it states that she needs permission. Mariah, so there might be um, something with the settings. I bet I, I have. I can see your screen. So yeah, uncheck that box. There we go. I did it on the other one. I didn't do it on the other one. I'm sorry. My no bad. problem. So yeah, if you guys want to just refresh your screen or click that link again, you should be able to get in. I will give, I'll give one more minute for that. That was my fault. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So one more minute here. I'm going to go ahead and start looking at the responses. How many people do we have on here, Jamie? Let me see here. We have... We have six total, five that are able to respond um, because they're not on the phone. Perfect. All right, then I'm just going to go ahead and go through these. So I just asked a couple of questions, and this was just to kind of get us thinking, going, um, and the first one was, how do you feel about online teaching? Um, and there were three options. I'm confident about my teaching abilities. I'm learning, but not completely confident. And I am struggling. Most of you guys said I'm learning, but not completely confident. That's fine, okay? 
this is a quick form and it's meant to just let you guys think and uh, evaluate yourself. Sometimes we get into this mindset of the teachers just evaluating. So this allows you to really think and reflect on yourself. Um, the next one, my communication with students online is excellent, good, could use work or non-existent. Most of you put could use some work. Communication with coworkers online is excellent, good, could use work or non-existent. Most of you said good. I love that. Oh, that makes me happy. Um, and then online presence is good and could use work. I love that it is 50-50. That, that's really, really good. All right. So this was just a quick warm up. And hopefully later it makes sense why I did this. Um, but I just kind of wanted you guys to start thinking about this whole idea of online presence and maybe what it means. So first off, is online so different from face to face? And we're talking about classes, building classrooms, teaching online, all of that. So is online really different from face to face? Now, when we're talking about the platform, yes, you know, you have to approach it very differently. But teaching online and teaching face to face is, I would say, is pretty much the same thing. There is different things. You have to use different tools. And we understand that. But just in like in the classroom, you have to use different tools and figure out what works and what doesn't. Online is the same thing. You shouldn't just stick with one method and go that way. You really have to figure out, will this work or will it not? And go from there. So online teaching, while it is you know, for some of us, it's a little bit of a scary area to plunge into. It's really all not that different from face to face. If you think about it, most of us have taught face to face for several years that we're just confident we go with it and it's fine. But jumping in face to face is the same thing. You know, if we're thinking about our first time doing it, it's still that unknown. And so online face to and face to face, are they really different? Not so much. OK, but the big question here. It's not as online different, but what does online presence mean? Simply means how often are you online and what are you doing online to make it feel like you are there? Um, when we think about classroom presence and we're talking about students is how often are they there and are they just there or are they participating? That's the whole concept of online presence. It's not just you know, the teacher's there, they're posting assignments, that's fine, but it's how active, how engaged is the teacher within that classroom. So online presence doesn't just mean how often are you on there, but what are you doing to make yourself feel like you're being active? And that's going to be kind of the big thing here is being active and not a passive teacher. And that goes for the students too. We want them to be active students. We don't want them to be passive. All right. Oh, Here we go. I have no idea. All right. All righty. Here we go. Uh, Jamie, are you there? Yeah, I'm seeing that error too. There. Okay. Well, what's happening? Well, I'm not doing full present, so that's fine. <laughs> well, just stick. Gotta love that technology. Works. Gotta love technology. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what can you do to create an online presence? So I'm gonna give you four key ideas. The first one is be consistent. The second is use various types of, assi of assignments. Um, the third is use apps for communication. And the fourth is knowing how to use appropriate la language. So these are like, when I was really thinking about this and trying to put it together, these were the four things that I felt kind of enveloped this whole idea of creating yourself in a virtual um, situation. So first one is consistency. Now, consistency means that you're doing something constantly. It's on time. It's at that exact point. And there are four things that I want to really, really push with this. And when you're doing online, make sure you establish a time and stick with it. Now, this is really hard and this is all of this. When I was thinking about doing this um, webinar, I had to think about myself and what did I do as a teacher jumping in online? And one of the biggest errors that I made was because it was online, I felt like I had to be there 24 seven. I have 
um, Google Classroom on my phone, I have emails, I have Hangouts, I have all of this on my phone. So anytime a student text, I was like, I was right there, I was doing stuff. And it was tiring for me. I was so exhausted and I was just so frustrated with it because it felt like I didn't have any time for my personal life. And so about, we do four week sessions and about halfway through that first four week session, I was like, nope, you know what? I have to figure out a time and I have to stick with it. And so I told my students every day, what my normal class time is five to 6.15. Okay, so every day I told them all assignments will be posted at five o'clock and they will be due, you know, maybe the next day or something. But I had to set myself some boundaries. I had to set a time and that way they could also understand, all right, the teacher will be giving new assignments at this point. They'll be posting all assignments or today's assignments at this time. And I know I can anticipate that being posted. And that also went with announcements. Any announcements I posted at that class time. I didn't go um, before or after. It was always at five o'clock. So I could schedule all of my assignments. I could schedule any announcements that I need to make at that time. And during that time, I also graded assignments. So they could turn in stuff, things that were turned in the, the day before. I had that time frame where I could sit down and do all of that. And those became my quote unquote office hours. Now, why is this so important? One, it gave me a huge break. Like I felt like this whole load just lift off of me because suddenly I had a time frame that um, students were able to just say, okay, I know between five and 6.15, my teacher will be on and I will be able to ask questions. And I know we all have these students, some students answer, or respond at midnight. Some of them are on at eight o'clock in the morning and it's just back and forth and back and forth. And that can get tiring. And right now with everything going on, it's so chaotic and there really is no stability. It feels like that if we can just give the students a little bit and say, you know what, at this time you can expect something to happen. It gives that consistency and it gives them that feeling that they actually have something in control. And I know with my students, they were able to see, oh, wow, this teacher is going to be on here. And so I know I can have my questions answered at this time. And some of them had work. Some of them had this or that, which is fine. Like any other teacher, you know, if you have students that need to meet at a different time, you can always schedule that. But you don't want it to be something that always occurs. You want to make sure, okay, guys, you know, during this time, this is when I will answer my phone. If you have time during the day, that's fine, but make sure you are consistent with that. Students, especially with the population that we serve, students need some sort of consistency. They need something that they can depend on. And if we as teachers can provide that, it's gonna make their learning experience a whole lot smoother and they are going to appreciate it so much. Um, once I finally set up, you know, like I said, it took me two weeks to find, like figure it out. And once I finally figured that out, students were on top of their assignments and they knew when to expect it. And they would send a whole bunch of questions all at five o'clock. But they realized that that was the time that I had set aside to devote only to them. You know, any other time we have everything else going on. So it might be like I'd answer them and then wait like 30 minutes and then respond or something like that. But during this time, they knew that they could depend on me to be there and establish the sense of, you know, class time, which is very hard to do in an online class. Um, students, and I know any of us who have done online um, classes, you know, taking classes or teaching classes, it's really easy to just say, oh, it's all online, I'll do it later, or I'll do it at midnight, I'll do something. Don't do that to yourself. Make sure you are sticking with the time and let, once that time ends, it ends. Give yourself a break, do whatever you need to do, plan, do something else. Just make sure that you are giving yourself a consistent time frame to do all of these things. So consistency, will be the key in creating an online presence. You want to make sure that it's something that's not going to just fall by the wayside. And really think about it if you were face-to-face. -face. 
If you were face to face, you wouldn't say, oh, today we won't have class. Maybe we will. We'll move it up to 10 o'clock. We'll move it up to five o'clock or eight o'clock at night. No, you want to make sure that you have some sort of consistency within your, your online classroom. Second one, with creating an online presence, make sure you are um, using various assignments. Now, why would assignments have anything to do with it? Assignments give you the opportunity to chat with students, to view feedback, to do so many things with them. When we think about the classroom, if you're constantly just giving out handouts, it gets boring, it gets redundant, and we don't have that opportunity to really connect with the students and show them what they're doing wrong. A lot of the trainings that we've done, um, some of us have done TBR and, you know, even just as a teacher yourself, if you're constantly giving out one type of assignment, it gets dull, it gets boring. We don't have as much of a lively classroom or an engaging classroom where they're actually learning something. So assignments, even online, play a key. And if we think about, um, I'm going to be using Google Classroom because that seems to be the platform that many of us are on. So with Google Classroom, you can do writing documents where they have to do an essay. And with docs, you can write comments. You can say, watch out for this sentence or reread this paragraph, do this, do that. You know, you can do little comments and see. It's a live feedback session that they can have. Um, I've done that with my students where they're writing essays and I'll just pop in every once in a while, you know, during that time frame that I have and I'll read their essay and I'll say, ooh, um, read the sentence and watch for subject verb agreement or make sure this is a complete thought, read your thesis again. You know, I go through that and those comments, I've had very good feedback from them and they go back and forth and we'll be sitting there and I've done this in class face to face and I've done it online, but they're able to see that interaction and when you're there in this real time sense, they love being able to chat back and forth on their document and you know, see your comments and able to read it. And sometimes they'll take your comments and they'll edit it. And sometimes they'll be like, no, I like my sentence and I'll leave it there. But giving them that opportunity to use, use that platform, that Google Docs, to really expand your classroom. And like I said, you can use private comments, you can comment right on the document. It gives you a way to actually feel like you're sitting there right beside them and guiding them through that writing assignment. The second assignment that I like to use are discussions or on Google Classroom, they're called questions. These are great and it doesn't matter what class you're teaching or anything, what subject or material concept you're teaching. These are so much fun because it allows the students to really, really connect with each other. So this last session, um, I taught on the four uh, types of sentences. And, you know, during this time, the students had been uh, coming on to the live sessions that I would have where I would have my time frame and they would get on Google Meets and whatnot. But during these this time, they got to interact with their peers and they realized that they weren't the only one in this classroom and they weren't the only ones who had children hanging on them. And they realized that they weren't the only ones struggling with the online concepts and learning how to use a computer and all this. They realized that they were they could connect with somebody else that had the exact same problems with them. And so in the discussions, when I had them do the assignment, I was like, all right, in this discussion or in this question, I want you to write a small paragraph using the four different types of sentences and just share with the class, you know, your little story or your day or however it was. And in that discussion, I was able to see what they wrote and they had students, they had their peers commenting and they were going back and forth and just talking about, well, I don't think you did that sentence right. Maybe you should add this or maybe you should add that. And I was able to go in and put my little um, bit of feedback in there. And we would just go back and forth, back and forth, where we came out with a really good discussion, something that we would have had face to face had we had that opportunity. We didn't. So using the online discussion board, that platform was wonderful because they were able to create a community. They were able to create something and it's just something they were so comfortable with. And if we think about like Facebook and Twitter and they have Instagram and all of this stuff, 
it's something that they could relate to. They understood how to use it once they got into, you know, that groove and realized, all right, these people aren't strangers. It really created a, a close knit community and a, a, like a family of sorts. And it was so good just to see the interaction between myself, the student and their peers. And this wasn't just one or two, you know, I had those students who ended up turning in assignments late, so they weren't able to participate as freely, but those who were able to participate, it just blossomed into something really, really beautiful. And so writing documents, discussion boards are all really good, and then feedback forms. Now, this is just a quick Google form. I Nothing real fancy, and which is something I had you guys do at the very beginning. I had you guys fill out a form and we kind of reviewed it. I wanted to see how comfortable you were. I wanted you to analyze yourself. So how does this come back to um, creating your presence? How do you show you that you're there and actively looking at it? Just what I did with you guys is I looked at what you guys were feeling, what you guys weren't. And for myself as a presenter, I can now look at that and say, okay, what is really needed in this presentation? If you're doing this on a student basis, maybe you could do a quick check-in at the beginning. If you're teaching math, how comfortable are you are you with using fractions? Or what is your comfort level with using graphs or a calculator? You can just do a real quick check-in so that way you can figure out what the best approach is. And this also, like I said, it gives them an opportunity to self-evaluate themselves because so often we're just like, okay, the teacher said this, so I'll do that. The teacher did this, so I'll do that. I'll just follow what the teacher says. And this gives an opportunity to put it back on the student and say, you know what? You analyze yourself so that way we can both work at this because learning isn't just a one-way path. It is two directions. So there has to be some give and take on both ends. And if they can realize that, they're going to feel more confident in being engaged within the classroom. And with all of these assignments, there's so many good tools that we can use. So don't just limit yourself, like I said, with one assignment or one type of assignment. Use everything that you can. I've used um, docs, forms, discussions, slides. I'm not real confident with um, Excel or with a uh, Google Sheets, but I have used it because just because I'm not a master at it doesn't mean that somebody else can't benefit from it. And I've had students who prefer Sheets. I don't know why. Like I, I still try to figure it out. They do their assignments and they do it on Sheets, and it's amazing. But, you know, just make sure you have this platform for everyone to use, you know, find, let them find their comfort level. So that's assignments. The next one I want to talk about is using tools, using apps. Now, most of this has been talking about how we can do it in the classroom. And that's great. But how can we step it up just one more notch? With the G Suite account for education that we have, there are so many apps that we can use. Um, we have Google Hangouts. Now, one of the things that I like with Google Hangouts is when you create um, NM Delta accounts, everybody has this Google Hangouts. And Google Hangouts is an app so they can quickly download it and it works perfectly and it works fine with anyone who has access to internet. But you can create groups, you can create individual groups, you can create classroom groups, you can do so much with it. You can do video calls and it works out so great because you're not giving out personal information. All they have is your email. So you can easily email or uh, hang out a student and say, hey, how's everything going? I noticed you haven't done anything in class. Is everything fine? Um, and if you do a group like your whole classroom, and it depends on how, how big your classrooms are because this can get a little bit chaotic. Um, but you can even do groups. You could do individual groups. If you want people to do um, group work, that you can separate them to do that. And it works out really, really well. The one thing, like I said, with everything else is make sure you have that boundary. Make sure you have that consistency where you say, hey, you know, you guys can answer um, any hangout between 8 and 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Because you don't want them. One of the biggest things that we kind of... Um, 
realized and we had an error with is we got everybody in one hangout group and then people were messaging at 10 o'clock at night, at three o'clock at night, trying to get answers. And so make sure you just kind of have those those boundaries where you're like, whoa, okay, hang on guys, let's let's make sure we have that consistency and make sure you have this time frame. But Google Hangouts is so good because it's it's a quick, easy way to communicate with your students. And most of them will have these apps, they can download these apps, it's not that hard. And it's easy because they don't feel like they're giving out personal information as well. So you keep yourself safe and it keeps them safe as well. Um, the second one is Meet, and this is the one that I really want to talk about um, because it's what we're doing right now, a Google Meet. You can have it with your classroom, and one of the things I said earlier was having office hours that you can sit there, be there, and communicate with them. So every day from 5 to 6.15, I would have students who would need to talk and they like to see my face. They like to see who I was because some of them didn't know who I was. So I would just have my meat on and um, they were not forced to come in here. If they had questions, they could get on meet, excuse me, ask their questions and then leave. And for a lot of students, that's all they needed. They just need a little bit of clarification. So they would get on meet for a little bit and exit off as soon as I answered that. But during that time, I had a couple of students who got on at the same time and one asked a question and then the other student was like, oh, I had the exact same question, I just didn't realize it. And so they were able to like chit chat. And again, it built that sense of, you know what? They're having the exact same problems that I am and we can build off of this. And with that meet, that's where my discussions and all of my assignments began to flourish because they realized at that point that this wasn't just them sitting at a computer and working. They realized that this was a whole world of people getting on classroom and having the same struggles. And they were able to connect with that. And they were able to see, hey, I'm not the only one struggling with this. I can do this because there are others in this classroom that are here as well, having the same issues, having the same frustrations. You know, They have kids, work, job, whatever. But I can do this because I'm not just at a computer, I'm in a classroom. And so Meet has really helped to break that, that mindset of, um, you know, just getting on, logging on and doing that, doing whatever needs to be done. But Meet has really opened their eyes and their mindset to see, wow, this is so much more than what I gave it credit for. So I love Meet. I use Meet all the time and it has been one of the best tools that I have been able to use within my classrooms. And there were some days, I'll be honest, there were some days where no students got on. And it's, you know, you sit there and you kind of twiddle your thumbs like, oh boy, what am I going to do? Are they going to come on? You know, but during that time, you can always keep yourself busy. You know, me isn't something that you have to sit at and be on. Um, you can always go and do your work, you know, great assignments during that time. And if you have your sound on, whenever somebody comes on, you hear it uh, make a noise. So it's really all right to have it in the background, but it's, again, that consistent time to use it. And you don't wanna, again, you don't wanna use it willy-nilly. You wanna make sure that it is consistent and the students know that it is there. The second one is email. Now, people are all different. I don't like email because, or I don't prefer email as a way of communication because it's a little bit more difficult to see if the students are seeing it like on Hangouts, we can see when they're on there or when they're not. Um, emails tend to get lost, and if they have their settings adjusted, you know, sometimes it gets sent to spam or whatever. Um, but emails are really good if you want to message the group as a whole, like a very detailed message. You can create a group on Google and just message them all in one place, and it's really nice. Um, typically, what I do, when I'm using email, it's when I haven't been able to get a hold of a student through Google Hangouts or Meet or Classroom. Then I'll send them, them an email and hopefully they get it. Um, but it's usually just a little bit of a, hey, you know, trying to check in on you, what's going on. But this all leads together. Like if you can't use one, use another. There's so many tools out there and many more. But like I said earlier, I'm just focusing on the G Suite for Education account. Um, or what we have in this 
account setting, but you could use, I've had teachers use WhatsApp. I've had teachers use um, Flipgrid. You know, there's so many other tools, apps that you can use. Don't just focus yourself on one. Figure out what works for your classroom. And again, variety is going to be the key because if you stick with one, that's great. You get comfortable with it, but that doesn't work for everyone. And the last one I'm excited about because this is like an experiment and it's always good to see your trial and error, see what works, see what doesn't, but workplace. So if you have a G Suite account, um, an education account with us, with the NM Delt, um, everyone has access to workplace and workplace is powered through Facebook. So it is kind of like Facebook, but it's not Facebook. That's very important to clarify. But one of the things with Workplace is you can create a professional environment where students are able to use some of their soft skills to figure out how to use a Facebook platform. It's not Facebook, remember, it's Workplace. But how to use this platform to create professional um, messages, professional posts, and how to communicate effectively with different people. So a lot of you, if you haven't gone on Workplace, it's a great place to be on. All of us teachers, or many of us teachers, I shouldn't say all, many of the teachers are on there and we have um, different groups that we can create. So as a teacher, you could create a workplace group and have your students in this group and communicate with each other. And that way you as a teacher, you can monitor what is appropriate language and behavior on an outline platform that is outside of the classroom. Why is this important? Because we want to do more than just give them, you know, assignments and assignments and assignments and get this done and get this done. We are really trying to prepare them for the workplace. We are trying to prepare them for real life. So this just gives us another outlet to kind of create this online environment of, you know, everything is so digitized and everything is so much, of, oh, excuse me, it evolves, revolves, there we go, around internet and technology and all of that. So why not take something that they are so comfortable with, Facebook, turn it into workplace, and give them the opportunity to use their skills in an effective and professional way. And this way they get a sense of being outside the classroom, but they understand that they are still required to keep some sort of professionalism. And it's real exciting because we do have some students, and I see a little bit of it, um, students who, who do try to participate in workplace and they ask questions and they want to do this and they want to do that. And that is great. You know, why don't we give them that opportunity? It's another tool. All of these are tools. Now, will they work for everyone? Again, no, it's not something that works for every single person, but why not use it? Why not try to utilize all the tools that we have? See what works, see what doesn't. You never know what would work in your environment. And what is the best thing that the student can feel like, wow, my teacher is here. My teacher is in this place and I can see it. They are really engaged and active within my learning. And that's what's going to happen whenever we try to connect to them at their level, which is going to be, you know, let's try to do workplace. You know, it's like Facebook, so they might be interested. Hangouts, it's a messaging, a messenger thing. You know, they love to text. That's what we're seeing even coming back into office. You know, people like to text a little bit more than talk on the phone. Um, maybe video chat. What is going to be useful for your students so they can connect, that it's not just getting on a on a computer and doing their work, but that they can actually learn from this experience. The last thing that I want to talk about is language and style. Okay, so so many of us, when we get on the internet, we want to make it sound so flowy and elegant and beautiful. And if you're like me, you go to the thesaurus and see what word can be replaced for went, you know. And we, we try to make it sound so, so professional. But again, you have to think about the, um, the target audience, okay? Most of our HSE students and ESL students aren't going to have the language, the academic language, the professional language of a senior in high school. You know, you have to think about what language can I use? And the biggest thing that I could say is shorter 
is going to be better than longer. So many times, whenever we write an announcement, we have to give them um, all the details and every single thing that we can think of into one announcement. And usually our announcements end up being like three or four paragraphs long. That's not the point because I guarantee you they're going to read the first sentence, maybe a middle sentence, maybe a last sentence. But if they don't get their answer in that first sentence, they're probably not going to read through it. And then you get those messages. How do I do my assignment? Or can I do this again? Or I didn't read the instructions. You know, we get those messages. So when you're thinking about posting anything, an assignment, an announcement, anything like that, think about your target audience and think shorter is longer. Can you fit three paragraphs into probably three sentences? Now, I know there are some things that you cannot do like that. Some things just have to be long, but the majority of the time we can even condense the longest things into something even shorter. I know myself, I love to talk in case you guys haven't noticed. I love talking. I love writing. That is who I am. It's just my personality. It's it's me. But this is something I've had to learn is not everyone's like that. Not everybody likes to listen to something long and boring. Um, not everyone likes to read like I do. You know, I'm the weirdo that wears that reads the fine print or, you know, the very, very specific directions. And uh, my supervisor and I were talking about this. And I'm the one that sometimes reads the instruction manual to the very end. Not everyone is like that. So you have to think about your target audience. How is it going to be effective for them? And again, biggest thing, shorter is going to be better than longer. Even if you're making a video, I like, again, I like to talk. It's me. Whenever I'm making a video for my students, I always use Screencastify because it limits me to five minutes. And I know if I have hit that five minute mark, I have probably talked too much. So. Um, make sure you're just thinking about your target audience and what kind of language style can you use to make it more effective. And at this point, when they see that you are trying and they'll understand, they will know, I promise you, they will know when you are trying, but it'll help you connect with them better. If you are off on, you know, the highest mountain point and they're still down at the very base of the mountain and you're using all of this language to try to get them up there, they're not going to want to. They're not going to understand. You need to make sure you're connecting with them by using specific language and specific style. So those were my four key points. Um, so just remember, consistency is always going to be the key. Make sure you have a consistent time frame. Um, consistent assignments, instructions, all of that, you know, be consistent with everything. That's uh, the biggest thing is consistency of what I can see in creating an online presence. You want to make sure that all of that is there. Again, assignments, your tools, language and style, all of these are going to help you create the best and most effective online presence. You know, we can have online presence and that's fine, but how can you make it effective? Which is using all, all your tools available, okay? Um, we get very comfortable and we stick in one place, which is fine, but how can we go one step beyond? And you want, everyone wants a great class. Everyone wants great participation and all that. So make sure you're utilizing everything that you can. And that doesn't mean you have to use every single thing, but utilize different things because it will make your class more effective. So as a wrap up, again, this is something I said with creating a tools, create something that they can, your students can analyze at the beginning, something they can analyze at the end. And I'm not talking about every class. I'm talking about, you know, if you want every class, that's fine, like an entrance and an exit ticket. Um, but maybe, the beginning of the week, the end of the week, how are they feeling? So if Jamie would please put this form link in the chat, and it's only one question long, um, but I would just like you guys to kind of reflect and answer that one question. And at Can this time, just, oh. I can I'll get that put into the chat, so sorry about that. Okay, so the link is in the chat, everyone. Perfect. So as you're doing that, and as we're wrapping up, 
um, I would like to thank you all for joining. And if there are any questions, I will answer them at this time. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat if you don't want to unmute yourselves, but you can unmute at this time. I think everybody's going to the forum <laughs> at the I moment. Know. I had to think about this. I was like, hmm, how am I see, see Jamie, that awkward silence. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is so much more that you can do with this. And this, these were just some tips that I have learned. Um, like I said, a lot of this is trial and error. And some of the more seasoned, or what I would say seasoned teachers, um, they know what works and what doesn't but for for all of us going online has been such a new and unexpected thing none of us were really anticipating everything shutting down and i don't think maybe some of us were but many of us were not really prepared to go fully online so it has been uncertain territories we're definitely wading into deep waters that we're unsure of um but that's fine you know, it's none of us are going to get this right on the first time. And, you know, you just have to see what, what works for you and what doesn't. But the biggest thing is keep trying. Don't just give up because something didn't work the first time or it's not flowing as well as you thought it would. Absolutely. So far, no questions in the chat. I uh, did get a few people just saying thank you very much. That was a huge help. So that's some great feedback. Thank you all for that. Perfect. And if you guys have any questions, I can be reached at my NM Delta account. I don't have it up on here, um, but it's mgn at nmdelta.org. Org. Yes. I'm actually going to put your email in the chat. So Perfect. I put that in the chat for you. And uh, while we're waiting, um, oh, Nancy Redhouse just wanted to say it's trial and error, so she might have some questions, you know, when she's in the process. And that's a good point, Nancy. Sometimes you have to try it out first and then questions come. So, yes. yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And I just wanted to remind everybody um, really quickly that we do have our teachers chat open forums three times a week. Um, so you, you get those emails from me on Sundays, um, but we have Monday mornings at 7.30, Tuesday afternoons at noon, and Thursday evenings at 6. So if you go to nmdelt.org, do you, you do have to put in the www. So if you put in www.nmdelt.org or if you look back on my emails, it has the links for those teachers chat open forums. And that is a great opportunity for you to come back after you've tried some of these uh, strategies and ask some questions. Right, that is very true. Thanks, thank you for that, Jamie. You're welcome. So, all right, well, if there are no questions, um, and again, if you have questions afterwards, feel free to email me. I have no problem answering any of your questions. Um, but I think we are done. Thank you, Jamie, for being here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Mariah, for such a wonderful presentation. I'm going to stop the recording now, everyone, but thank you so much for attending, and have a fabulous week.